If you want it, you can just roll right into the interview from there. Perfect. Okay. So what you do here? Bob McLeod interview, take two. All right. Bob, just look into the camera and introduce yourself. I wanted to start off by going way, way back and finding out who your earliest comic book influences were growing up that made you want to break into the comic book business. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was in love with Mad Magazine. So my first major influence was Mort Drucker, did the movie satires for Mad Magazine. I had a huge influence on my drawing. I learned a lot about figure drawing from looking at the way he exaggerated figures, uh, not just the face, but the whole body. Even though that was satire, that influenced my more dramatic drawing later on in my career. Um, but when I decided to try uh, doing comic books, I mainly studied Neil Adams and John Buscema. Two of the masters. Well, they at the time, uh, back in the 70s, when I got in the business, they were the top two artists in the business. So I was looking at Neil for everything on the surface. I loved his rendering, but I, I wasn't in love with his storytelling or his uh, drawing per se. Uh, I really preferred John Buscema's uh, the way he moved his figures, the way he posed his figures, set up his panels and everything. So I studied John Buscema for more of the storytelling and structure and Neil for the surface. And of course, you know, a hundred other guys too. Uh, but that was my big two influences. Neil Adams had a big role in, in getting your first break at, at Marvel, is that correct? Yeah, when I was trying to get in the business, I was getting nowhere, just getting rejected and rejected and rejected. Joe Orlando, the art director at DC Comics at the time, actually told me I needed to go back to school and learn how to draw. So, <laughs> so that was pretty crushing. Didn't know what to do, and my roommate, Pat Broderick, another comic book artist, introduced me to Neil Adams. And Neil looked at my samples and said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, anything that pays, because I, I was out of money and ready to take the bus back home to Florida. And so he picked up the phone and uh, called Marvel and got me a job in the production department uh, doing lettering corrections. Wow, just like that, picked up the phone and... Just on his say-so, I got to Marvel uh, next Monday morning, whatever, and they didn't even want to look at my portfolio, just put me to work. I kind of took it for granted at the time, but it was a wonderful way to learn my craft and, and meet everyone in the business and kind of find my place. Russ Heath was right there. I could watch him working. Legendary war comic guy. Yeah. Uh, of course, Neil and Dick Giordano. So many people, Larry Hama, Ralph Reese, uh, that I could just, you know, stand over them and watch them work. So it was a wonderful way to get influences and, and just learn how to do the job. You know, it's funny, you had mentioned how and you really enjoyed Mad Magazine and more Drucker. Then you started doing work for Crazy yeah. Marvel, the, the, the satire magazine that they had for a while. How was that experience? Because a lot of people don't remember Crazy. Some of us were a bit older, <laughs> a bit of a more vintage age, do remember Crazy quite fondly. <laughs> yeah, my very first job, in fact, was for Crazy, doing a satire of the movie Westworld. So right off the bat, I was penciling and inking my own work, but satire work. And I loved working for Crazy, it was a lot of fun. I did other uh, little things for them besides the movie satires. I did a little character called Teen Hulk, who wasn't the other Hulk, he was a separate Hulk, but as a teenager, so that was fun. Teen Hulk was classic. Yeah. Underappreciated <laughs> character in Marvel history. He has his fans, <laughs> uh, so that was great fun, but I, I soon realized Nobody um, that mattered cared about the humor comics. It was all about the more dramatic comics. And if I wanted to really have a, a steady career um, and have enough work, I needed to learn how to do uh, dramatic comics. I'm always curious about folks from back in this era if they had any good Stan Lee stories. Was he even in the office that much at that time? He was. Um, I went down and got Stan's autograph one day. <laughs> it was fun. The Marvel office was so much smaller. The business was smaller. It was almost like a family. We would have softball games. The Marvel office would go play softball after work in Central Park. Stan Lee pitched a couple times at our games. <laughs> so it was fun. You know, it was a really nice atmosphere. We had a volleyball team, uh, played against DC and other publishers. There was no money to be made. Everybody that was working in comics at that time was just there for the love of the business. People like John Musima wanted to be maybe uh, illustrators, and it was easier getting comic book work than illustration work at the time. Because I wasn't into superheroes that much myself. I was more of a humor-oriented person. I've read somewhere that you don't really read comics that much. And 
Did that start back then? When I was a kid, I read Superman comics. Right, but once you got into the business, did you continue reading them? I read some just because they gave us free comics. Everything they published, they'd give us a copy of. Uh, my favorite at the time was Tomb of Dracula, penciled by Gene Colan and inked by Tom Palmer. So I read that, I read Conan. Seems like you didn't read any of the superhero books. I mean, I like superheroes okay, but that's not where my interest is. So yeah, I didn't read that many comics except to learn, to make myself a better artist. You know, what, what could I pick up from what the other artists were doing? Um, that actually makes sense. Yeah, but for enjoyment, I would read novels. You and Chris Claremont co-created The New Mutants. I think people kind of forget how big a deal it was back in 82 when it first debuted because that was the first X-Men spinoff. What was that like? How did you get connected with that project? I did a penciled a couple fill-ins for the X-Men, 151 and 152. And the editor and Chris liked what I did on those issues. And they actually offered to let me be the regular penciler on the X-Men. I said, great, because, you know, who wouldn't want to draw the X-Men? But then they said, well, we also have this new project. We're going to do a spin-off for the X-Men, a younger team, and you could be co-creator on that. Um, you know, so it's up to you. And I said, well, how can you turn that down? So I took the New Mutants, uh, even at the time thinking, well, this might not go anywhere. It might be dead after a few issues. Um, who knows? So it was a big gamble choosing that over the X-Men, which was a very successful title. Yeah, I, I believe that was a top-selling book at the time Yeah, for Marvel, right? Yeah, I mean, I really wanted to draw the X-Men. <laughs> and I had just done two issues, so I was really into the X-Men. Uh, but, you know, co-creator, a uh, whole new team, um, it, it just, you know, that was fun too. So I chose that, and, and Chris had already come up with some powers and uh, names for some characters. Um, but they uh, needed someone to visualize all that. They didn't know if Sunspot, was, for instance, was going to be big like the Hulk when he used his powers and then shrink back down, or who exactly was going to be on the team, because Chris had some characters, more characters than we ended up putting on the team, so we had to choose which ones to use. and. You know, a lot of detail. We didn't have a name oh, so yet. So there were more. There were more characters that were suggested, and then yeah, that he used down. later on. But we didn't have a name for the book yet. Uh, we weren't sure what it was going to be called. The working title was just the Mutants, which was Stan's original title for the X Men. Was going to be the Mutants. Either Chris or Louise uh, came up with the New Mutants, and I never really liked that name. <laughs> I thought that's kind of lame, the New Mutants. Uh, so we thought of some other stuff and just. Couldn't really come up with anything that we liked better than that, so we ended up calling them the New Mutants. Cannonball, Wolfsbane, Sunspot, Daniel Moonstar. Which one of those do you remember really getting your attention right off the bat? I always loved Cannonball. I just, from my Mad Magazine influence, made him kind of big ears, you know, and gawky looking. I didn't want him to look like Superman. I wanted him to look like some average kid that uh, suddenly had these powers. And uh, Danny Moonstar, pretty girl, she was just fun to draw. It's actually my idea to have more girls on the team than guys. Every other superhero team before that had like a token female. I enjoyed drawing girls. I said, let's put more girls on the team than guys. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think something that gets overlooked is how ahead of its time it was in terms of the female representation and also the diversity. Oh yeah, that was kind of the idea of the book to make it more multicultural. You know, X-Men were all pretty much white. I guess Storm was on the team maybe at that time. They were just starting to try to get away from all white characters and, and get some more uh, nationalities and races in the books. Um, so it was very deliberate to try to be more multicultural. I'm interested in, in your thoughts on the approach you're taking with the movie, making New Mutants a horror film. I mean, it's not what I would have done. I, I always, uh, I get so tired of the origin stories in Spider-Man movies. So we, know, <laughs> we know who he is already, let's, let's move on. But for the New Mutants, which most of the world doesn't know anything about them, I really would have preferred to do like a, an origin story, um, but the uh, director, uh, Josh Boone, sh sold it uh, to Fox as a trilogy of horror movies, uh, which is a totally different take from anything that's been done so far with comic book characters. And I think that's you know actually pretty exciting. It it could be really fun uh, to see what they do with it. Well, one the trailer was great. Yeah. But it is interesting to take a project and turn it into something a little different than what fans expect. Exactly. The same yeah, mutant yeah. story. Enough with the explosions and the uh, fighting between the heroes and everything. The fact that they're doing this differently uh, really appeals to me. So I think it could be uh, a good approach. And hopefully it'll do well in, in the theaters uh, so that they do end up doing the whole trilogy. The idea came from a 
couple of issues that Bill Sienkiewicz drew, the Demon Bear Saga, and um, the director was really, that really appealed to him, so he want, that's the movie he wanted to make. Did you and Chris have anything but polite conversations with the, the filmmakers? And the I haven't writers? said a word. They haven't approached me at all. I don't know anything more than you do about <laughs> what's happening with the movie. And they're not really using anything that I contributed to the book. The characters don't really look the way I drew them. But they're using your characters. They're using my characters, so, you know, <laughs> I'm you know, very well, happy. Famed, you know, they're using the, the original lineup. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Wolf Spain, uh, at least they're giving her like a, a short haircut, kind of spiky hair, kind of like I drew her, so that's good. You know, I'm, I'm very pleased that they're making the movie at all and that they're using my characters because there's so many characters that came into their mutants after I left the title that they could have used. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with it, the way it's going. You penciled the, the graphic novel that debuted the New Mutants. There was some really bad time where there, wasn't it? Like, you almost didn't do it because you were getting married at the time? It's not that I didn't do it. It was going to be a regular comic issue. And I got a couple pages drawn. And then the graphic novel line was starting up at that same time. And they were looking for projects to turn into graphic novels. And so I was going to have months to really do my absolute best work on the first issue of The, of the New Mutants. And then when it became a graphic novel, they were behind schedule on those, totally different schedule. So suddenly I had more pages to draw and less time to draw them. And so I just had to draw as fast as I could draw. And that was my very first regular penciling assignment. I wasn't ready to knock out pages. I needed time to think of my storytelling and everything. So I was rushing to do that and, and the editor said, we're gonna have somebody else ink this because it's so behind schedule. I said, oh no, please, <laughs> I really want to ink this myself. And you know, it's, my, it's a graphic novel, it's this, introduction to this new team, I've, I've got to ink it myself. And so I convinced them to let me ink it myself, but I had to ink it through my honeymoon. I happened to get married at the same time. I'm sure that went over very well with your, <laughs> with your new bride. Yeah, she was not thrilled. Um, <laughs> but we ended up having a, a month-long honeymoon on the beach, so it was okay. Did you pencil on the beach? Did you, did I you did, yeah, on the yeah. And really, then, you did? Yeah. <laughs> and then we ended up having like a second honeymoon a year later when the royalties came in, so it was good. <laughs> Well done, yeah. well done. Bob, thank you so much for the time. All right, you're welcome. It's great talking with you. Sure.